friend, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am so happy that you're watching this because chances are you're not only really interested in the topic that we're going to be discussing today, but you are probably packing your bags right now to head on to the Caribbean and more specifically, you're about to visit St. Martin. If you are, welcome to my channel. This is definitely the place for you. So consider subscribing if you are looking to find some more authentic ways to experience the island when you're here and you want to know some of the local travel tips, recommendations, what to see, what to do, what to eat, what to experience. I got it all right here on my channel for you. In case you're new here, my name is Rizal. I am also known as the Traveling Island Girl. Check out my new logo, isn't it cute? I know, right? So here on this channel, I share all of that valuable information with you. I've been calling this island home for the past 23, now going on 24 years. Ooh. I can't believe it's been that long and um, I just love sharing everything about it so today's video is about sargassum I know it's been in the back of everybody's mind um, this past summer uh, especially if you're heading to the Caribbean I bet it is something that you are considering to ask someone about as well you want to know if it's here if it's on our beaches what is it do I need to be scared of it etc etc do you need to cancel your vacation gosh I hope not so like you I didn't know much about sargassum eater so I had to go and find somebody who does other than you know knowing which beach is on when it's on it when it's not I didn't really know much about it so I went to my good friend Tatio Barefoot and he is not only the guy to ask all of these questions to he is my go-to guy for everything ecosystem environment um, and especially everything about marine life so i didn't know whether this thing is a seaweed is it a seagrass what is sargassum right and that is what we're going to be discussing today now before we dive right into that icky conversation it's not, that, it's not gonna be that icky really um i just wanted to let you know that this conversation that i've had with tatsio was recorded back in may of this year and uh it was also the very first episode of my brand new podcast paradise perspectives now paradise perspectives i started in june of this year and uh it is a podcast that is all about how to experience the caribbean in an authentic way now as a local person myself i know how important it is that uh locals get a platform where they can then share their travel tips and their recommendations to you the visitor to the caribbean because of course there's nobody else that can tell you about the island that you're thinking of visiting other than the persons who actually live where you get to vacation right so now of course if you want to check out my podcast then please head on to the link that i have in the description box below it will take you straight to my podcast page it is actually available on all of the major podcast platforms like apple Podcasts, spotify you name it it's on there check out paradise perspectives when you get a chance and you want to make sure that you stick around until the end of this video because i'm going to share a couple of other things with you that might interest you and that might elevate your experience here on the island now without much further ado let's just get into this nasty conversation i don't know actually it's not that nasty it's okay don't worry about it it's not that scary at all and here is tatsu barefoot on the topic of sargassum mr tatsu barefoot and i'm so excited to have you here because especially because you were able to take some time out of your really busy schedule shark tagging i mean like what the hell it's, it's it yeah i mean it's a huge pleasure to be here i mean and uh it's also an honor to be the first guest on so i really really appreciate you uh you having me which is so bizarre hearing you say that because um i've i've been following you i'm like a huge fan of tatsio by the way oh, no. and um Likewise. i still follow Likewise. everything Likewise. that you do <laughs> it's, it's like, fantastic every time it's like you're my guy to go to whenever i need something on conservation on nature on environmental you know so everything like that i always go to you so we're gonna go to another scary thing and that is sargassum <laughs> so which for it's a scary. lot of people busy in the caribbean especially now <laughs> It's very yeah. scary, right? It's like the yeah. last thing yeah. you want is you're, you've been looking forward to a beach destination for so long and that beach that you've been imagining yourself on is just full of 
sargasm. So let's just tag, let's just dive right into that conversation right now. So first of all, what is sargasm? And am I pronouncing it right? I'm always like, is it yeah, sarcasm? Sure. Is it sounds more like sarcasm? It's like, what, <laughs> what is it? I've heard people ca call it sargasm, sargasm, orgasm, take your pick, but um, it is a, <laughs> yeah, it is, sargasm is uh, a macroalgae. What macroalgae means is that it's not a seagrass, so it's not turtle grass or manatee grass. It's not a flowering plant, what, what normal, well, well, not normal, but what seagrass actually is. Um, but sargasm uh, is- It's a a definitely not seaweed that you get next to your sushi. No, 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 definitely not. It's a macroalgae, um, a brown algae. So within the class of algae, there are different ones. There's red, brown, and green. Uh, and sargassum specifically is a brown algae. Um, one of the characteristics uh, of brown, of any algae, and brown algae specifically, and sargassum in this case, is that uh, when there's a large input of nutrients combined with an extended period of warm weather or warm surface, sea surface temperatures, then you have what we call blooms. Uh, so what the Caribbean has been, and not only the Caribbean, I may add, it's also affecting um, the east coast of Florida, all the way down to the, uh, the Atlantic coasts of South America, and also uh, the West African wow. coast. So anywhere from Congo straight up to, uh, to um, um, wow. uh, Morocco, it's been affecting there as well. So the whole Atlantic basin is experiencing these massive uh, algae blooms. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, that's what uh, that's what sargassum well, is. So like you just mentioned, it was it is something to do with the heat. Um, so is this why we're experiencing a lot of it now that we're approaching summer? Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> actually, this year uh, it's quite interesting because. We, we started to experience heating events in the Atlantic even before uh, April. So we've been having landings of sargassum since yeah. uh, the end of February or March. Um, mm -hmm. the, normally within the Atlantic, I have to say that, you know, in a normal ecosystem in the Atlantic, there's an area of the Atlantic called the Sargasso Sea, uh, where usually this type of algae proliferates. It's a normal area. It's, it's the normal status of that particular ecosystem. Uh, it also supports various juvenile fish that live in the open sea, et cetera, et cetera. So it is actually an important ecosystem. Uh, the issue now is that because of uh, a changing climate uh, and because of uh, increased runoff from two of the major rivers on the planet, and I'm talking specifically about the Amazon uh, and the Congo River, there's been increased uh, nutrients being loaded into, Atlant into the Atlantic Ocean. So as I mentioned, brown algae, if the, the conditions are correct, such as uh, extra warm uh, sea temperature and an extra high load of nutrients that are being flushed into the Atlantic Sea uh, because of the Amazon River and the Congo River in Africa, um, we have the perfect conditions to have these blooms. So what we're seeing now is that instead of sargassum being concentrated in the usual spot in the Sargasso Sea, it's now proliferating throughout the whole Atlantic Basin. So, you know, for example, right outside of the Eastern Caribbean, uh, there's a 1,800 square kilometer patch of sargassum that's floating in our direction. So, um, you know, it's just sargassum going to is ask one of you these, about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sargassum is one of these issues uh, that are uh, more likely than not. I mean, you know, it's it's a relatively new issue. We started to see major landings in the Caribbean in 2011 uh, and 2012, but it's definitely one of those issues that are that are exacerbated by anthropogenic pressure, so by human influence. So 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 interesting because I had a feeling, and and I think you now going back to the topic of tourism and how sarcasm is, of course, affecting it, is we haven't had. I cannot remember a time when we were having this in the tourist season you know it was usually a problem that would it wasn't even a problem because we locals we were so used to it in the summer mm -hmm. you got a little bit here a little bit there it's just concerning that it has been started earlier so now tourists coming to the air to the island during that time is now it's affecting sure. their vacation sure. um and one of the main questions that i get uh, asked all the time is, you know, if there's going to be sarcasm, I don't want to be there. But 
this is where I wanted to pick your brain on a little bit. So what can you tell a person who has booked to come to the Caribbean in the summer, which of course sure. is not a lot. It's a, you know, our tourist season kind of like dwindles down around uh, this time of year. So what would you recommend to them that they can still get a hundred percent out of their vacation time? Sure. I mean, <clears throat> I, I think the issue is, is, one, we're starting to see the landings happening happening earlier and earlier. Uh, normally, when there's these type of landings, only the Atlantic facing beaches are really impacted. Uh, on St. Martin, for example, we have Orient Beach that gets impacted. Uh, French Cul de Sac, which unfortunately is a ferry terminal to go to Pinel, gets impacted. Um, but our major tourism beaches, other than Orient Beach, uh, of course, which they clean regularly. I mean, they they do a pretty, you know, a relatively good job in, in keeping Orient Beach clean. Um, but usually our western and southern facing beaches, and I'm talking about Simpson Bay, Great Bay, um, Mullet Bay, usually uh, because of the predominant winds that come from the east or northeast, northeast or northeast, um, the Sargassum just passes those major tourism beaches uh, and doesn't inundate those those particular areas. But because it's landing earlier, usually in March, we have periods of wind reversal. We have periods of uh, karma yeah. winds, which allows the Sargassum to land on those beaches where it usually doesn't. So what we've been seeing this year is Mull mm -hmm. Bay Beach, Simpson Bay Beach, um, Great Bay Beach, uh, Little Bay, Bel Air, all having these major landings of Sargassum in areas where they usually don't have the landing. Which is and that has so... been causing a little bit of... Exactly. Yeah, as it has been causing a little bit of discussion and a little bit of panic. Um, what I usually tell people is that um, it, the, the dominant wind conditions, uh, we usually only have three or four weeks a year where the wind, and especially in the spring, where the wind comes from different directions, whether it's westerly or southerly, which causes these landings and beaches where they usually don't land. But uh, the dominant wind direction is east, east, northeast. So usually only those beaches on the eastern side of the island get affected, which sucks, uh, but it's only a few beaches, Orient Beach, um, like I mentioned, uh, French cul-de-sac, uh, Coralita, you know, some of those beaches do have issues, Guano Bay, Don Beach. Um, but usually the major tourism beaches of Simpson Bay, Mullet Bay Beach, Great Bay, et cetera, et cetera, don't have those, those major inundations. I mean, St. Martin is St. Martin because we have so much to do, not only of course, we have some of the most beautiful beaches on earth, uh, but we also have beaches. other activities that they can that they can totally yeah yeah they can totally participate in. And the landings that have been happening, exactly. Um, so Mullet Bay being affected, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, usually, for only about two or three days, it affects Mullet Bay uh, or those southern facing beaches, Simpson Bay, Great Bay, or whatever have you, and then usually it gets washed out. Um, so I definitely would not tell people mm -hmm. to put off a vacation or to cancel their plans because of potential of sargassum landing. There's always a beach that you can find. Yeah, yeah. there's always a beach you can find. I mean, people people uh, were contacting me when when Orion, uh, when Mullet Bay or Simpson Bay was being, being inundated heavily. And I told them, just go to Orion Beach. And they went to Orion Beach and it was the most beautiful they've ever seen Orion Beach before. Hey, sorry for interrupting the conversation, but I need to tell you something super important. And that is that, you know, I have so much free information out there. It's on my social media. It's on here on YouTube. It's on my podcast and it is on my blog. My blog, by the way, I've done a little bit of an upgrade on it and my services are also listed on it now besides all of the important information that you can get about St. Martin and all of the other Caribbean travels that I've done. Now, speaking of my services, I understand how daunting of a task it is when you're trying to plan your trip especially to a place you've never been to before and you wish that you had somebody local that can give you a little bit more of the insight so if this is something that interests you then definitely go in the description box i've left a link to my calendar and you can go ahead and book a uh, date with me i would say <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to the conversation with Tatsio. Is it is the sargassum itself or is it itself harmful to humans or to your skin? Or I mean, will it affect you if you happen no. to swim in it? Or although nobody really wants to swim in a in a bunch yeah. of it, but mm, I mean <clears throat> I mean to clarify a, a, an earlier point, it's only through you know, throughout my career dealing with sargassum, I've been dealing it with it for about eleven years now. 
And it's only a handful of times, maybe two or three times that, you know, I really had to urge uh, officials to clean up certain areas because people were complaining so much about the decomposition and the gases that get released and that their eyes are watering and that they're sneezing and, and coughing. So it's not something that, that, you know, happens regularly where it, it causes harm. Of course, it's stinky, uh, but that's really the extent of it. Whether or not it's harmful or not, the, the sargassum itself is not harmful. Um, so, you know, it's quite possible to, um, you know, have it on your skin, et cetera, et cetera, and it won't bother you. What, but what does happen is because it, you know, it makes these mats, so these big mats of, of, of the algae of the sargassum that washes ashore, these mats also collect different things. So they collect jellyfish, which can sting you. Um, they also collect uh, rope, for example. So when we first started to deal with it, um, and before, when I used to work at the Nature Foundation, I used to put releases out, for example, saying that, you know, please avoid swimming in the sargassum, not because the sargassum itself is dangerous, but because it can have debris inside of it, ropes, etc., which you can get entangled in, and which can cause problems for you if you're and swimming. You, can't so that, see. you know, you don't want to have fishing when you can't see, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So my, my recommendation always is to avoid it. Don't go swimming in it. Uh, but, you know, if you happen to come across a mat of sargassum, it's not as if you have to hightail it out of the water because, you know, you're going to get, you know, ill or anything like that. When do you think, can we say, okay, now we're getting, the, we're getting to the end of the sargassum season? Yeah. Well, I'm hoping, you know, we, we've had such an early heating event here in the Caribbean that we've we've been having waters... 27, 28, 29 degrees Celsius, uh, which is pretty unusual for this time of year. So I'm hoping that means that we'll have a cooling event earlier rather than later, which is also great news for hurricanes. So I ho I'm hoping that by October, November, um, before the start of the next high season, that we can have uh, a bit of a respite from, from sargassum. But again, just like you said, um, you know, Things have been so strange know. lately with, with the way that things are changing that we don't know. But I'm, I'm hoping and I'm about 70% confident uh, looking at the trends and people are modeling. And, you know, I'm a part of a couple of working groups that deals with these mm -hmm. kind of issues. Um, the models predict that by October, November, we should, we should get a little bit of a respite. But again, I mean, it's, it's, if there are listeners out there who are concerned about traveling to the island because of sarg sargassum, I don't think it's really a reason for you to cancel your trip. Um, there's alternative beaches you can go to. Uh, there's beautiful guest houses and hotels that are not necessarily in areas that get inundated by sargassum. So, you know, resources are, are out there for yeah. you to have a look so at. So many options. Um, there's so many options. So, you know, do a little bit of, of uh, some groundwork and, and you should have a great time. Uh, on St. Martin, as usually the majority of people who come to our island have. Thank you, Tatsio, because like, I'm sure I'm going to be welcoming you back on the show at one point or another. Okay. We're going to have another discussion about something. So thank you so much for making the time to be here today. Oh, man. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you. And if you wanted to listen to the complete chat that I had on uh, the topic of sargassum with Tatsu Barefoot, then I invite you to listen to the complete episode on it. And that is available on my podcast, Paradise Perspectives. I have, of course, left a link in the description box so you can get to it faster. And other than that, there's not really much that I, is left for me to do here other than telling you thank you once again for watching. Next week, I'll be back with another video and this time we're talking about the 15 things that I recommend you must do or experience when on the island of St. Martin. You do not want to miss that. Subscribe to the channel and also, of course, follow the podcast Paradise Perspectives because that conversation is actually already on there. So if you do not want to wait and you want to know about what my 15 must do experiences in Samaritan are, then I recommend you go to the podcast and listen to it. Other than that, I'll be back next week with that information for you. Now, thank you for watching. My name is Rizal, the Traveling Island Girl. Bye.